story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, fantasy and horror film called Honeymoon. Here, we'll see a common struggle between a married couple, manifested into a horror story. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Many people consider their wedding to be the happiest day in their lifetime. After the wedding, their honeymoon is a way to celebrate the couple's new life together, forging what many hope to be a lifelong commitment. But every married life has its struggles, and unfortunately for our protagonists, their struggles come at the height of their celebration. Newly married couple B and Paul record a video, reminiscing about their romantic history. Despite their chaotic first date involving food poisoning and how Paul proposed to be under a makeshift tent in their bedroom instead of on a camping trip like he planned, B and Paul are ecstatic about the married life ahead of them. The couple arrives at B's family cottage in the middle of a secluded Canadian forest for their honeymoon. The quaint and cozy home provides them an escape from the hustle and bustle of the city, allowing them to focus on each other in their relationship. B joyfully gives Paul a tour of the cottage's many simple and outdated furnishings, but Paul gets distracted by his lovely wife and initiates making love with her. On their first night, B and Paul spend a romantic evening. Paul calls her honeybee, to which B playfully responds by buzzing like a bee. However, a mysterious white light shines over their bed as they sleep, unbeknownst to the sleeping couple. The following morning, Paul insists on cooking breakfast, suggesting B to rest her womb after their escapades from the previous night. The conversation turns awkward, with Paul regretting his words that pressures B into conceiving a child. He explains that it was only a joke about their intense evening. B drops the topic and leaves the kitchen. Paul joins his troubled new wife, where the couple reconciles, agreeing to focus on themselves and leave the topic for another day. The topic of having children is a crucial one between newly married couples. Ideally, couples discuss this before their wedding. Unfortunately, B and Paul skip this topic, thus, the simple joke put pressures on them most of all on B. Later that day, B shares how she and her father used to hunt, which Paul has no experience of. The couple takes the motorboat into the lake, enjoying the fresh air and natural wonders. They plan to take a dip into the lake, but the water is too cold. Instead, they head back to the cottage and spend an intimate time in the shower together. For lunch, the couple heads to a nearby restaurant but finds it empty. A frustrated man tells them the place is closed, aggressively knocking over a lamp. But as B and Paul leave, the man recognizes B and catches up to them. The man, Will, is B's childhood friend who married into the family that owns the restaurant. He apologizes for his behavior, sharing how he's only frustrated about the many broken items in the restaurant. The conversation turns sour when Will's wife, Annie, comes out, demanding the two to leave. Will grabs his wife, forcing her to back off. He smiles back at the couple, excusing that his wife is simply unwell. Will offers to serve them food and compliments B, which makes her uncomfortable. As they prepare for bed, Paul teasingly offers to catch fresh fish to serve for dinner the next day. But B doesn't share his upbeat mood, distracted by the events at the restaurant. B worries for Annie, but Paul reasons that Will's intense attitude might be why Annie seems strange. Paul believes that Will is a violent husband, but B believes her childhood friend isn't like that at all. Paul comforts B, promising that they're different from Will and Annie, thus, nothing like that would happen to them. Seeing another troubled couple understandably brings up certain issues to the newly married B and Paul. Witnessing a seemingly violent husband and a meek wife makes them wonder what the future holds for them. But the two put their faith in their relationship, promising to themselves and each other that they won't end up like that. That night, as the couple sleeps, the power fluctuates. Lights wane in and out and Paul's phone alarm rings loudly, waking them up. Paul gets up, hoping to catch some fish to prove to his wife that he can also provide for her in the wilderness. But having no experience with such as Paul tumbling with the equipment and dropping the box of bait. He steps outside, confused at how dark it still is. Checking his phone, Paul realizes that his alarm went off too early. He heads back to the bedroom, finding the bed empty. Figuring that B is in the bathroom, he explains how it's far too early to go fishing. But when he checks the bathroom, she's not there. Paul searches around the house, thinking B is simply playing a trick on him. A moth lands on the kitchen light, catching his attention. The back door of the cottage creaks, revealing that it's been recently opened. Paul steps out, searching for his wife in the darkness. At dead of night, the woods are pitch black, with few light sources illuminating Paul's way. He calls out for B, his breath heaving as he goes further. Dread and confusion increase with every step he takes. Finally, he hears twigs snapping in the distance. He follows the sound, fighting through the thick woods in search of B. In the middle of nowhere, Paul spots a naked woman standing, unmoving. He slowly touches her, and as soon as their skin makes contact, B screams. This moment turns their entire honeymoon around. Finding your significant other missing from their bed is horrifying enough, but seeing his wife naked and disoriented in the woods would no doubt terrify any man. However, the horrors are just beginning for B and Paul. Paul carries B back in the cottage, her naked body covered with his shirt. He sets her down on the couch, concerned about what happened. But B disregards his concerns, only interested in keeping warm in his arms. B reasons that she was only sleepwalking, but Paul is not convinced. Nonetheless, he hugs B, taking comfort that, at least, she's safe with him now. Throughout the rest of the evening, B cleans herself up, acting as though nothing happened. 
Paul watches her with worry, even as she sleeps. On the next day, Paul wakes up with B already cooking breakfast in the kitchen. But B is still out of it, having forgotten to batter the French toast before frying up the bread, causing the bread to burn. B denies forgetting about it but admits to feeling odd. Paul suggests heading back to town to get her checked up, but B insists that she's okay. For the rest of the day, B continues to act oddly. She doesn't respond to Paul's usual playful banter and eagerly jumps into the lake despite noting how cold the water was just the previous day. After getting back to the cottage to change, B explains that she thought it'd be funny to jump into the cold lake. As the couple gets intimate on the couch, Paul notices odd marks on B's thighs. B immediately jumps out, claiming that they're mosquito bites. Paul doesn't buy it, however, and becomes suspicious of her behavior. B's dismissiveness over what happened the previous night is truly strange. Sleepwalking is real, but waking up naked in the woods is a whole other story. Given B's behavior, Paul needs to protect his wife even more. He checks on the bite marks while she's sleeping but stops, worried about waking her up. Instead, Paul heads to the woods, where he found B last night. There, he finds B's discarded nightgown, the one she wore that evening. It's torn in places and covered in a sticky, transparent liquid. Nearby, Paul finds muddy footprints that don't match his nor B's. Back in the cottage, Paul finds B talking to herself in front of the mirror, as if convincing someone she has a headache and a stomachache. When she leaves the bathroom, Paul has sneaked into the living room, pretending not to have seen her strange behavior. In the evening, B and Paul gather around a campfire. Paul watches his wife closely as she eats, still uncertain about the recent events. They return to the cottage and play dice while having beers. The game turns romantic and sparks intimacy between the couple again. While making out, B tells Paul that she has a headache, exactly how she said it in front of the mirror earlier. Paul pulls away, concerned. He finally shares his concerns with his new wife, who assures him that nothing happened. To distract him, B attempts to go down on Paul, but he stops her. Instead, he requests to see her in her nightgown, but B becomes defensive, lying that she already put it away with her dirty laundry. Paul drops the issue, though he isn't satisfied. Paul is sure that something happened in the woods that B is not telling him. He found her nightgown torn and dirtied in the woods, and B has no reason to lie about it unless she's hiding something. But her increasingly defensive behavior lets Paul know that he won't get answers from her yet, so he ends the conversation. Later that night, Paul watches B sleeping. Suddenly, she gets up from bed, forcing Paul to pretend to sleep as he watches her go. Paul quietly follows her in the darkness, but B returns immediately, excusing that she only went for a drink. Paul stays up that night, unable to sleep as his worry fuels him. During this, a strange white light illuminates parts of the house, as if a searchlight looking for something. When it finally reaches the bedroom, Paul gets up, and the light abruptly disappears. He heads out of the bedroom and follows the light in the living room, grabbing the shotgun to defend himself. Paul steps outside the cottage, searching for the source of the light. Spotting a movement in the woods, Paul follows it and fires a warning shot to scare off the potential intruder. The sound of the gunshot alerts B, who opens the cottage lights behind Paul. Back in the house, Paul explains how he saw someone in the woods who was watching them with a flashlight through the windows while they sleep. He presents B with a torn nightgown, interrogating her about the previous night and the other footprints in the area. The footprints weren't theirs, leading Paul to believe that someone was in the woods with B that night. Approaching his wife, he reminds B of his love, assuring her that she can be honest with him. Then, he asks if she met Will in the woods. B is baffled at the idea, but Paul insists on her confessing, questioning if Will forced himself onto her. The couple argues, ending with B begging him to stop ruining their honeymoon. With her dismissive behavior and sudden aversion to intimacy, Paul deduces that B was attacked. Having seen Will aggressive to Annie and seemingly interested in B, he becomes Paul's only suspect. But he can't accuse the man without evidence and B's statement about the crime. Their quarrel leads to Paul spending the night in the other bedroom, leaving B to sleep alone. Paul is still not over the potential danger lurking around their cottage, determined to protect his wife. He spends the night playing with a lamp, not knowing that B also can't sleep in their bedroom without him. The next day, B writes facts about her life in a notebook. When Paul checks on her, she quickly shuts the notebook, raising his suspicions further. While cleaning up the campfire from the previous night, Paul flicks a few ants that have gathered, bothering B. He notices the bite marks on her thighs look worse, which she ignores. To rekindle their romance, Paul and B fish in the lake. The calm and quiet moment is broken when Paul decides to go back to the city. All the recent events bother him, but B assures him that they're okay. As the two gaze into each other's eyes, Paul gets passionate and puts his hands into B's pants. The sensual moment is cut when B pulls away. Her pants and Paul's fingers are covered in blood. B rushes back into the cottage, claiming that she's fine as she hurries to the bathroom. She claims that it's only her period, but Paul remembers planning their honeymoon away from her time of the month. Paul insists she packs her bag so they can leave as soon as he returns. He walks out of the cottage, eager to confront Will before they leave. Believing that B might still be in physical danger, Paul takes matters into his own hands. As many would, Paul takes charge to protect his wife and intends to make the man responsible for her predicament to pay. None of B's excuses could convince him to back down now. In the restaurant, Paul finds it closed but sees Annie out on the deck, carrying an armful of ropes. Annie stumbles back upon seeing him, seemingly scared. 
Paul asks for Will, but Annie tells him that Will is hiding. When she stands up, there's also blood and the same bite marks inside her legs as bees. Paul questions her, offering help to escape her husband. But Annie warns him, saying that they will hurt him before leaving. Paul watches Annie get on a boat and drive away. In the water, Paul picks up Will's cap, finding blood around the rim. Curious, Paul heads to Annie and Will's house behind the restaurant. He first checks if anyone is inside before he enters. He stumbles his way through the dark until he finds the office. He tries to switch the light on, but it doesn't work. Remembering the security camera outside, Paul opens up the computer and checks the footage from the front door. Here, he finds footage of Annie walking out of the home in the middle of the night, with the strange white light shining on her face. Suddenly, the computer flickers and shuts down. The electricity in the office fluctuates ominously as Paul finds strange notes on the walls. Most of the notes are Annie's list of information about her life as if a reminder. Paul remembers be doing the same in her notebook that morning. From the edge of one of the notes, Paul finds the same strange liquid from Bee's nightgown in the woods. The lights all finally turn off, prompting Paul to leave the house, not noticing the strange figures watching him from the window. What seemed to be a crime becomes something more horrific. Annie's strange behavior matches Bee's exactly, but after finding Will's bloodied cap, he may not be the suspect after all. The mystery goes deeper than what Paul may want to believe. In the cottage, Paul speeds to their bedroom and finds Bee's notebook from her bag, reading the notes she made earlier. Looking back at all her strange behaviors, Paul interrogates her about their pasts, and she lists information about her life exactly as she wrote them in her notebook. Paul corners his wife, demanding why both she and Annie wrote the notes, have the same marks on their legs and sleep walking in the night. He reveals finding Will's bloodied hat and asks Bee what Annie did to her husband and if she intends to do the same to him. But Bee stresses that she wants to protect him. Tired and scared, Paul searches for their car keys, but it's missing. He demands the keys from Bee, who's locked herself in the bathroom. Paul breaks down the door and finds Bee on the floor, bleeding as she stabs something between her legs. Bee quickly tries to push him out of the bathroom, begging him to go back to the bedroom. But Paul yells for her to tell him the truth. Bee frantically runs back to the bed where Paul corners her, begging her to confess. When Paul calls her Honeybee, he sees the confused look on her face. Paul asks what she's supposed to reply after he calls her Honeybee, but Bee claims that they don't remember what to say. Bee tries to escape, but Paul throws her back on the bed. The struggle leads to the couple rolling off the bed. Bee desperately ties Paul with a rope, but he turns the tables on her and ties her to the bed. The unanswered questions and lurking danger has pushed the couple to the edge. Paul, who promised not to become violent towards B, is desperate for answers and has tied his wife to the bed. Such a tense situation can push people into doing something they never wish to. With B subjugated, everything goes quiet. Paul is desperately worried about his wife, having no idea what's happening to her. He comes up over her, studying her body's condition. He wonders why she isn't crying about her situation, expecting such emotions from the real B. B calmly asks if he'll release her if she cries. Paul's suspicions heighten, believing that whoever is in front of him isn't the real B. B insists that it's her, weakly shaking herself from the bed before giving up. Hoping to prove that she's the real B, Paul asks questions about their first date and wedding, but B doesn't remember the answers. When Paul asks how he proposed to her, B recounts how they went camping, and he proposed under the stars in their tent. But this isn't what happened. It was the proposal Paul planned, but B got sick, and he made a makeshift tent in their bedroom instead, where he proposed. Fully convinced that this woman isn't his wife, Paul demands where the real B is. He inspects the woman's body, recognizing every detail exactly as B's, but he believes it's not her. He touches her between the legs, asking her how it feels. When he pulls away, a strange thin membrane covers his hand. B encourages him to keep going, asking Paul to take out what's inside. Paul grabs a long, worm-like object and pulls it out of her body. B quietly squeals in pain as Paul drops it on the bed. Freaked out, Paul leaves his wife as the thing moves beside her. Something far more sinister is at play, and it's not what Paul assumed. He thought his wife had been replaced by a fake, only to discover something growing inside her. Carrying the creature inside had been the cause of her injuries, strange behavior, and bleeding. Outside, Paul heaves his breath and wipes off the membrane from his hand. B comes out of the bedroom, her legs covered in the thin membrane and blood. Finally, she tells her story. That night, B followed the light into the woods, where she saw silhouettes of creatures. The creatures went inside her body, then left abruptly. B had been feeling them inside her since then. With it inside her, B knows creatures will take her, and she only wanted to spend her remaining days with Paul. Unsure what to believe, Paul insists that they leave, but B refuses. She tries to convince him to stay in the cottage, hoping to stay with him until the time comes. Suddenly, the white light appears, hovering over B's face. B becomes stoic, and in a monotonous tone, she says they don't have any more time. B reverts to normal and warns Paul that he must hide, otherwise, the creatures will get rid of him. She turns and smacks Paul on the head. When Paul wakes up, it's morning, and he's tied up on the boat, in the middle of the lake. B claims that she'll save him. Worried, Paul demands her to untie him, but she's decided. B drops an anchor into the lake, with the other end of its rope tied to Paul's feet. B assures him that the creatures won't find him under the water, but Paul begs, knowing that he'll drown. B ignores his pleas and lifts him over the boat. 
Paul struggles to stay on the boat, but B pushes him into his watery grave. B smiles, believing that she saved her husband. Her smile, however, slowly fades. Fear and desperation can truly lead to people doing strange things to the people they love. B knew what happened to her but chose not to share it with Paul in the hopes that she can still enjoy her honeymoon before getting taken away. But in the end, her love for her husband resulted in his untimely demise at her hands, believing that it was the only way she can save him. That evening, the traces of the previous night's events are still all over the house. B sits in front of the television, watching Paul's speech from their wedding video about their first date. Her body is now deteriorating, her skin is dry, and her eyes are yellow. The white light appears, calling to her. She opens the front door and finds Annie waiting for her, with her skin and eyes different like B's. The two walk into the woods, where figures in the shadows await them. B follows the white light in the woods as her wedding video continues from the cottage. One of the figures steps in front of them, and the light shines brighter. Against the white light, B says, before I was alone. Now, I'm not. B and Paul's marriage is thrust into a couple's worst nightmare, mixed with blood and horror. As if a metaphor for the pressures of pregnancy and motherhood, B is impregnated by unworldly creatures. The alien pregnancy saps the life out of her, leaving her body broken and devoid of her personality. This portrays how some women struggle with carrying life inside them. It changes their bodies, and the responsibility of bearing new life forces them to change. B's distance from her husband, lack of intimacy, and dismissiveness of her own condition symbolize such struggles, though shown horrifically and supernaturally. Annie was also a victim of this circumstance. When she saw B and Paul, she might have been warning them, hoping to save them. But Will, who didn't understand what was happening to his wife like Paul was, tried to control the situation. This might have led him down the same fate as Paul met in the lake. In the end, despite her devotion to her husband, B chooses to accept the new yet frightening life ahead of her, where she is no longer alone. This may represent how some women, despite knowing the struggles of motherhood, would still choose to nurture the life they bring onto the world. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.